How's it going guys? So today I'm using Windows 11 to run this. If you need to know how to use Linux as a subsystem on Windows so that you can run Bun, I do have a video tutorial on that which gets Bun all set up. There will be a link in the description. Also, if you want to see the source code of this or a written tutorial, I have a link in the description to a written tutorial that also has the GitHub repository and all of that stuff. So feel free to check that out if you think that will be helpful. In a new file here, the first thing we can do is import the package. So we can say import database from bun colon sqlite. Once that's imported, we can connect to the database. We can do that by saying const db equals new database. Now let's give it a database file. We're just going to call this db.sqlite. And then we can console log the database to make sure it's all working. To run this, I'm going to type WSL. And now that I'm in the Linux subsystem, I'm just going to say bun sqlite.js. And it does seem to be working. Awesome. I'm going to have to refresh my files here, and you'll see that database was created. I didn't have to create it prior. It will create the file if it doesn't already exist. So the next thing that we can do here is create a table. I'm going to say db.query. And I'm just going to say create table test and inside of this test we're going to have a val1 and a val2. I'm just going to make this a really simple test table and make sure you put that semicolon in there and then we can say run. Now when we run it, it looks like nothing happened. If we run it again though we get that error that the table already exists which means obviously it worked the first time. So we can comment that out. So the next thing we're going to do is insert into the table in a simple way. And then afterwards, we're going to insert into the table in a more complex way. There are a few ways to do it. So we can make a query here and we can say the query equals db.query insert into test value one and value two. And we're going to pass in two values. So here I'm just going to make some simple test data for the values. Let's say test val simple. And then we can say another simple test val. Then we can say query.run and run it. Now we're not going to know yet if that worked. I'm fairly certain it did though, but we'll check on that later. The next thing that I want to do is show you how to do a more complex version of inserting. So we can say let insert equal db.prepare. And then we're going to say insert into test. We're going to get those two columns again. And then we're going to pass a value one and a value two as variables. This is noted by putting a dollar sign before them. So now we can say let insert data equal db dot transaction. And it's going to take in an array and we're going to say for data of data array. insert dot run data. So now when we call this function, what we can do here is we can pass it a value one, and then we can just pass it a string. And notice that the object keys here are the exact same. That is very important. It can't be something else or else it won't really work. It's supposed to be the same. So we're going to run that and we didn't get any errors. So I'm going to assume that it worked and it should have created three new sets of data for us. The next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get rows as an object. So we'll be able to see if it all worked because we'll be querying the database. So let's say const query equals db.query, select all from test. Let result equal query dot all, console log result. And there we go. We have all of the data that we wanted to get. Awesome. All four of the things are logged. Nice. So that seemed to work very nicely. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to get all of the rows, but as arrays. It's pretty simple. Instead of saying db.all, we're going to say db.values. And the rest of it can be the same. And you'll see now it comes to us in a different format. This can be helpful depending on what you're doing, especially if you're modifying code that you had working with Node.js that gave it back to you in arrays anyway. That way you don't have to change it all to work with objects now. We can also just get one row back here. We can do that by saying query.get instead of query.values. And this is just going to get us that first row. So it's going to be the first one that we entered, which was our simple insert. 
and I'm also going to show you how to close the database, which you should have been doing the whole time. Sorry, I should have said that to begin with. So db.close, we can put at the end. It doesn't really matter because we're just running this as a standalone program. But obviously, if it's something that's continuously running, like a server, it's really important that you're closing out that connection every single time that you're connecting to it. And you should be doing that regardless. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, you found this helpful. If you did, let me know. If you have any questions, also, please let me know. I don't know, I'll do my best to try to help you out. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.